All right, we're back. It's another episode of Different Kind of Genius. I'm your host, Andre Kufo. Big shout out to Griffenberger once again. They're going to hold us down GB. year round. So fuck, if you're not eating their food, you should be. All right, so it's always a special guest today, but this time it's literally one of the homies. He's probably someone that I have a different kind of genius conversation with at least once a week. So I thought it was only a matter of time before we get him here. But fuck, with me today, it's Kip, Kip Kong. How are you, brother? I'm good, bro. I'm great, man. I'm great. Thank great. you so much for finally being Thank here, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. You know, it's been a long time coming. I've seen the come up of the show and it's been... It's been massive, bro. It's been massive, bro. So thank you for having me, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you, my brother. And I know it was a shuffle because you're a busy, busy man these days. Busy so man, we're bro. like, fuck. Bro, always on the go, bro. Never stops, man. Like, you I can't. Think it's just like my ADHD or something, bro. Like, it's just ADD, bro. It's done stop, bro. Just got to do, do, do. On the go, bro. On the go all the time. But it's good to times like this, we can look back and reflect, you know? 100%, yeah, bro. bro. That's the one. Well, fuck. Start us off because I obviously know what Kip Kong does. But shit, tell the people. Oh, for the people. Um, what do I do? Kip Kong is, I try to look at it as like a superhero, bro. A superhero, bro. Someone that you can look up to, bro. Someone that, who doesn't care, man. Someone who, can I just have a smile on their face, bro, whenever, man, you know? A superhero, bro. This guy, like, is this, what's wrong with this guy, man? He's got <laughs> nerves of steel, bro. He's got bloody, he's got rhino skin, like nothing can penetrate this guy, you know? That is Kip Kong to me. Kip Kong is keep it positive, keep on going. That's what Kip Kong stands for. Keep it positive. Keep on going. That's what Kip Kong stands for. So that is the message. What well, I portray, not even a message, just as the way I live, bro. Like, keep it positive, man. Keep it positive. Keep on keeping on. All these little, all these little things in my head, bro, just to, you know, get through the day sometimes. Give um, us an example of one of those things. Ah, uh, sweating in the gym, bro. You're having the, the worst day, you know. You might have had a car crash. Your girlfriend might have, you know, dumped your ass. You're like, I'm just going to go to the gym just to, you know, try express myself. Try get that uh, out. Because sometimes, bro, if you don't get it out, you're going to put it on someone else who didn't deserve it, eh? So you might be having a shit-ass day, bro. Everything's going wrong. I'm in the gym sweating. Just keep on going on, man. Just keep on going on. Because I know... That if I start in that other mental and start blaming everyone else for my shit day, it's just going to come back to me as well. I'm going to give him a shit mood. I'm going to give her a shit mood. And it's just, well, we're all going to be in a shitty mood and no one wants to be around that. All right. So I like to think of keep it positive as a habit, mm. not just a motto. Everyone can have a motto or, or a way of life. Man, positive habits, bro. Positive habits, positive habits, positive habits. That's the one. So I'm going to take you back just a little bit. So back to high school, yeah? All the girls were like calling me Kip and stuff. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kip's cute, yeah. Yeah, Kip's feeling Kip's himself. Man, yeah, yeah. Kip's, yeah, they're calling me Kip. The ladies love it. It's all good. As I got older though, that kind of, that novelty wore off. Mm. You know? As all novelties As do. As all novelties do. I knew I was cute, I knew I was the man, I knew I could dance, I knew I could do whatever. So that was that was all good. When I changed into this positive habit, keep it kit became a positive habit, uh, a reinforcement, a positive reinforcement for me to get through any task. Because sometimes the task could just be getting out of bed, bro. You know? Some days it's hard, bro. Some days it's hard. No one wants to get up to an alarm, bro. No one hate everyone hates that shit. Don't worry about getting up to an alarm. If you're struggling to get out of bed, there must be a reason you don't want to go to that job or you don't want to, you know, you don't want to get up at six in the morning and go lay concrete. It, uh, I, knew, I did it for a while, but I wasn't having it, you know, because I was, wasn't liking getting out of bed and the keep a positive habit wasn't working anymore, mm. you know, because I lost sight of the end goal. So you need to scale it back a little bit because, yes, keep, keep, keep. Keep on keeping on. Keep it positive. It's a habit. It's my habits. My habits are what creates this big superhero-like, you know, aura about myself. You know, I like to, I like to walk with my shoulder, you know, my shoulders back, chest out, chin high, head high, bro. Head high, bro. You know, big ass smile. Mm. You know, positivity is infectious, bro. 
And we talk about it all the time. You got to lead by example. You got to lead by example. Negativity is infectious too. So that's why I say if I'm, I don't want to put my bad day out on you, you know, instead, why don't I just keep it positive, have a life with you. And bro, I'm feeling like this, you know, this happened and this happened today. Ah, bro, fuck. Now we've got somewhere to vent, you know. Now mm. we can express to each other because you might be having a shit day too. But you just got this face on and no one knows about it. 100% bro You know So everyone's trying to It's alright to You don't have to be hard all the time Yeah man Fuck being the tough bro, guy bro Being The biggest softy Is the toughest guy I'm telling you bro You look at some of the biggest players Or biggest like Biggest dudes man But really Inside they're like this On the outside They seem like this But on the inside They're like They're afraid Because everyone can see them mm. You know Everyone's eyes They're always looking down bro And they see the eyes man I wish I was that tall. <laughs> no, you don't, bro. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> yeah, We've had this conversation you, bro, numerous like, times. No, you, know, you don't. Like, sometimes, bro, you just got to keep it positive, man. Straight just keep up. it positive. So the name Kip came from, you know, it came from the girl. He's calling me cute, saying this, saying that, thought of, and then it was just big up in me and I felt good about myself. And then there was a second reason too. <clears throat> My real name is Darone. Now, try order a pizza, a taxi, and having a foreign name, bro. They can't start calling me Daryl. They start calling me Darren, Daniel. Bro, nah, bro. My name's Kip. <laughs> <laughs> you can't fuck that up. Nah, bro. K-I-P. Get it right, bro. <laughs> bro. I know exactly how you feel. It's like Andre. To me, it's a fucking simple name. Simple. Andrew. Andrea. <laughs> I'm just like, what are you talking Say about? Say it up, That's why I'm like, just like literally I'll call places and pretend I'm Jack. I'm just like, yeah, I'm Jack. <laughs> and I'll be waiting for food, hear Jack being be called, lazy, and I'll just be like, why hasn't my name been called yet? Because oh. we lazy as like, Literally. Like, I just couldn't be bothered saying my name over and over again, man. Like, I hate repeating myself, man. I hate mm. repeating myself. Well, when I need... They don't always hate it, but saying my name like four times, I'm like, no, not Tyrone, Tyrone. I was like, it's not even Tyrone, it's Tyrone. You got me fucking up my own name. Like, <laughs> far out, man. You can't so, have yeah, none no, of that. My name was Kip. And then Kip for ages, you know. It's Kip for ages. And then, I don't know, something just, I like to have, I think, I think is when I started really getting into a positive mindset that everything I did and wanted to do and how I moved and what I stood for always had like a meaning behind it, you know? So like- Explain if, that a bit more, bro. Uh, so like, easiest way I can explain it, bro, is like my tattoos for existence, uh, for <clears throat> my tattoos for instance, um, all my tattoos have meaning behind them. But like all my tattoos, see all my tattoos have meaning behind them, yeah? Um, so like, like my head tattoo over here, this is a, a manaya. I'll go into a bit detail later. Um, I got another manaya here too. And this whole thing. So in Māori, it's called a tāmoko. So Say that one more time. Tāmoko. T-A space M-O-K-O. Tāmoko. So a tāmoko, they say it's your mate. It's your mate for life. You put him on your skin, you know, it's your mate for life. So what I put on my skin was my whole family, you know. So every single pattern and every single wave or little anything, everything that's here means something, you know. Mm. So I was like, if I'm doing this to my body and I can tell you a story, I think that's what I really like to get into, bro, is storytelling. True. Yeah. So when I do something... I come geeked as to tell you because it has a mad story behind it. Mm. Why? Because that story has meaning. And you might be able, you might not, or you might, you might see a perspective from it that you can latch on and gravitate towards. And now we've got something to talk about, you know? So I got meaning. I got meaning everywhere, you know? The way I moved, what I do for my name right now, like KIP, keep it positive, keep on going on. Like that is, everything is just meaning, bro. Everything I do has meaning. Um, the way I'm, what I do, how I move, who I do for, it could be the smallest meaning. But, you know, I'm not talking like materialistic. But every stuff. meaning is significant. But every meaning, yeah, oh, that's, that's perfect, bro. That's beautiful. Every meaning is significant and it's memorable. 
and that's why I put it on my body. So fucking express to you on my body, just imagine what else I express as well. Within, we're expressing right now, just talking, you know. Mm. It has meaning towards it because we know that people out there don't always get to chat like this. But when they do, it's amazing, bro. The chat's like these different kinds of geniuses. Why are they amazing, bro? They're amazing because you finally get to say what's on your mind, bro. You finally get to dive deep into your inside. We're always talking about external, right? Fucking hate my job. Oh, need a new car. Need a new house. Got these bills Got to these pay. bills. Got that bill. Everything's external out here, yeah? <clears throat> Everything external. I and mean, yeah, we can relate. Yeah, bro, we both got bills. We, we got residual bills. We got... We got jobs we got to do. We got do. jobs. We got, you know, family to take care of. We've got... Me and you are no different. But when we start putting into why we do what we do, why do you do what you do, bro? And why... Do, like, I do what I do to help the next person, you know? Leave it better than you found it. It's true. Straight up. You know, like... That's how we all should be leaving the earth. 100%, bro. And I ain't trying to... Like, I'm going off on a tangent now. It happens all the time. Sorry. Go for it, bro. <laughs> Go for it. But you, when you... You do yourself a service, man. And, like, not for yourself, you know. And then once you start diving in deep, because you figure all this inside shit out, you figure all this stuff up here out, so... What helped me figure it out was like my my keep it positive that that mental help that mental habit helped, and then it goes into all right, bro. This helped me, you know. This is what was what helped me, bro. Maybe you're just looking at it from the wrong perspective. Maybe you're just looking at you know the class half empty or half full, or whatever way you want to put it. Whatever helps you. This is what has helped me. So now we can talk on that. You know, we can talk at eye level, bro. Because I feel like. So what I was talking about before, superheroes, yeah? Everyone's looking up to that guy. Oh, man, I wish I could be on that level like that guy, mm. you know? Bro, if you just bring him down to your level and you talk eye to eye and then you really dive inside, bro, that's when the magic starts happening, bro. And then you're like, holy shit, I'm a superhero too, <laughs> you know? Individuality and being yourself is what I think of is the key to being a superhero or being on that next level because people are always going to look up but it's either you're going to help them up or you're going to tell them how you got there or you're going to be a dick and just push them all down you know so what's your meaning what's your meaning what's your why why are you doing what you do straight up bro you said the most important thing there being a superhero means you being able to be yourself 100 percent, bro bro there's like robin can't be superman you know, Robin Batman can't only, be Robin. Batman can't be Robin. You got to stay in your own lane, bro. You got to do your own thing. Because people are going to, the attention's going to come. When I say that, like, the attention's going to come, like, if you're doing you, you're not like anyone else. So if you're not like anyone else, then you're standing out. If you're standing out, then eyes are going to be attracted towards you. Once those eyes are attracted towards you, you have their attention. You have the attention, so what are you gonna do with it? What's, what's, what's why? What's your why? Why are you doing that? Mm. Is it for your own like self, just gain, or are you grabbing the attention to create a platform for others to also come in? You know, bro, I don't want to be at the top by myself. It's boring as. You it's know, lonely, I want to come up. I want to come up with everyone, and I want to come up strong too. With good values and a bunch of superheroes like the, like the bloody Avengers or something, mm. you know, like. So how? Like, give us an example of how you chose to live that life with your group. All right, let's talk about Bay City. Shout out the boys, Bay City. All my boys at Bay City, love you all. Um, you are who you surround yourself around. You're gonna surround yourself around football players. You're probably gonna play football. You're going to surround yourself around, you know, you've got a family full of chefs. You're probably going to end up being a chef. Um, when I wanted to surround myself around like-minded people who wanted to just go for it, bro. Just send it, man. And like, 
Like really dream big too, like big platform stuff, like superstar status stuff, man. Mm. I don't care if you don't know how to do it or you don't know what the hell you're doing, but you have that vision in mind of you standing up on a stage with millions and millions of people and your streams and your, you know, music videos and your Gucci gang, whatever. Get it, man. Like you, you get the picture I'm painting, eh? Mm. These superstars, man. These, the ones that are like aiming for it, the gun for the top, man. I'm like, bro, I'm going for the top two. I want to be surrounded about that vibe. And it just happened to be all my friends anyway. Mm. But we were all like distant friends, you know? We all had our own friend groups. We all, everyone had their own friend groups. It's kind of like a habit in school, you know? You become a part of a group and, no, oh, never mind that group. Oh, no, that, that group's not cool, you know? Like, but you learn something from every group. You learn something from Which every creates group. all the people that you surround yourself with now. 100% bro and even all the all the groups that I I'm not even called them groups like they're still my friends you know they're still my boys like because they they all like just accepted me for me as well mm. and it's exactly the same thing over here so like I ain't gonna push no one away either so it's not like like the Bay City group is like the my only group my ride or dies and that's it you know because that, that ain't the truth we came together of pure passion and pure drive to holy shit like we're all in geelong doing like the same thing man why don't we link up and make something good like make something fresh did it make sense bro and it made sense bro i'm like it's happening like it's happening i'm like man i've never liked i've never been one for like gangs and stuff bro like i've never been one to like really like join a gang or something or like even follow a football team bro you know i think it was like a little bit of like identity with myself I mean, we'll go into it later but um i never like backed any like team or just like gang like straight up bloods or straight up crips you know or like straight up um geelong football club until i seen bay city and another business called your house okay your house played a big part played a big part in team building and business skills and we'll talk about your house in a minute but um was that the first time you found? I don't like. Uh, I didn't. Is that the first anything? time you found your people? Yeah, bro. Like I walk into a room and I like what this guy's saying, man, because it sounds like the stuff that I like to talk about. You know, we can, bro. Like I don't talk. I don't like talking down on stuff. I don't like dragging anything, man. Mm. All I like talk. Oh, I just putting it up, bro. Just you know, putting it up. You know. And create the hype and be like if it's gang like yeah it's gang <laughs> and i didn't like dragging nothing bro so it's like i did found found bro i feel like i think everyone had that vibe eh? everyone had that like, oh, like this is it like these are my people some, yeah we got some we got some mobsters like just ready to just send it bro just go hard and and then we did and we still are and it's cool because we're everything's always changing every year. One year we was just like show, 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 shows, Melbourne, Melbourne, Melbourne. Now all the shows are right here. Now they're right in the bay. You know? We knew. We knew. The way we moved, bro, we knew that would create attention because we were different. We were being ourselves. We weren't from Melbourne, you know. We weren't from like Wollongong or something. We were from Geelong, man. Mm. From Bay City, Geelong. And like, what? What's going on down there? <laughs> you know? It's like, what are they doing that well, we're not doing? What the hell is going on down there? Like, what's happening down at the deck with Way Riders, you know? What's happening down at Bloom with Flexibition and stuff? Like, all these shows and, like, people were just, like, just flabbergasted, bro. They had no clue what was going on. And, like, that's what I like. I like surprising people too, you know? I like bringing something fresh and new, uh, a new vibe to to anything. Like, as soon as, as soon as I walk in a room, I want that whole room to be lit, you know? I want it, that. Lights on, camera action, like let's go. Keep it positive, yeah, bro. Keep it positive, man. I ain't dragging nothing, bro. And just keep on keeping on. And then once you start getting into that mindset of keeping it positive, bro, it's just second nature. So it's a habit first, yeah. But it takes four weeks to create a new habit if you do it every day. You know? If you don't it's, believe me, try it. Try a new habit. Bro. Four week, for four weeks straight, every single day, you, you do something new. Or you do one thing. It's simple, though. We've got to think about all the habits that we do have. Bro, Imagine trying to quit. You go to the gym, you try to work out, you try to get bigger, yeah? You got to work this out too, bro. You got to like, oh, it's like a like a samurai sword, bro. Like once he goes out and slays, bro, he has to start sharpening again, man. Mm -hmm. You know? You got to have a sharp mind, eh? Because 
when your trials and tribulations come, I'm telling you, it's not all like, it's not all, what's that old rocky one? It's not, not all sunshines and rainbows, and it's not. But after them stormy weathers, bro, that's when the sunshine and rainbows come out, and that's gangster. Literally. Yeah, keeping it positive, looking at it from a different perspective, man. Instead of just dragging it or just like, just can't be fucked anymore. Like, why can't you be fucked? You know, mm. You're running off feelings and emotions. You're not running off disciplines now, you know? Feelings and emotions are a, are a big one. No one likes getting out of bed, you know? But once you have emotion or a drive or a goal, that gets you out of bed, man. Like, you're Why just, does it get you out of bed? Because though? you're finally doing what you want to do, bro. And it's like, I finally do what I want to do. Why, do I wanna, why would I want to stop doing it? Mm. If you stop doing it, then you must, it mustn't be your why mustn't be strong enough. Why you do what you do every day mustn't be strong enough. If you have to go out to the mines and go like get a job and you know look after your family, so be it. But don't complain about it because you gotta look after yourself. You know you gotta do your shit. You know get in that, like Jamie Taylor said, you gotta get on your grown man shit. Literally. You know. And then it also comes out comes up to you. If you're not enjoying what you're doing, then what the hell are you doing, man? And why are you doing why it? Why are you doing it? Oh, because of this, because of that. All right, now you're making excuses for me, bro. And don't make excuses around me, bro. <laughs> like, uh, I, I will give you a different perspective every time you pull up a, an excuse on me, you know? Because mm. I'm like, and sometimes that sounds harsh and just seems like, now it sounds like I'm dragging it, you know? Like, oh, he's just being a hard ass. He's just being a bit of a prick. But I'm being a prick because I know the end goal, bro, is sunshine and rainbows, bro. Like, it's gangster. And you get to really look back and reflect in that. Just ah, smell the roses, bro, you know, kick back, you know, instead of just you... dragging your ass every day out of bed. Have a reason, bro. If, have a goal. Have something in mind to aim for. If you're not aiming for anything, bro, you're just shooting in the air, hoping something's going to catch, you know? And it's like, what's the point? What's the point? You know, yeah, it's fun for a little bit, but fuck, I'm getting a sore arm. Like, Literally. Straight up, bro, one shot. Straight up, bro. <laughs> Execution, bro. Literally. Execution, man. Wait, but you said something before that needs explanation. We know what Rav Riders is, Where but what's Flexibition? Ah, uh, Flexibition. Flexibition is for the people, man. Flexibition is where you get to flex your shit, you get to have the best time, and you get to just have a good time, man. Have fun, dance all night, get goat photos, you know, have a good memorable night with your peoples. Flexibition. Flex your shit. I say flex your shit like, oh, what's your shit? I, I mean clothes. I mean you can rock up and rock the mic. Jump on the mic, bro. If you can if you can dance, you can bust down, then let's battle, bro. Like, you know, flex exhibition, man. It's an exhibition of flexing. That's all it is, man. I'm just creating a platform for these guys to flex. And you put it, you put like, all right, he's going to do two songs here. That's what, six minutes? That's two songs. That's six minutes. You know, another one or two songs here. You put all that together, bro, you got an hour show, you know? You got half, you got dance, you got live rap, and it's all raw. That's mm. the best part about it, bro. Like, we had the first flexibition, and, like, some tracks, like, they didn't even work, bro. Bro, I, I was there. It was, you know, you seen it, but you also seen the vibe, too, and the vibe of the lip, bro. Not only that, it was how you managed to deal with the fuck up. Oh, hun, bro, keep it positive, man. What are, oh, I'm telling you, bro, I'm telling you, bro. You can either, what do you call it? When you, bro, when you fall out of a boat, don't panic. You know, don't pa don't panic in the water. That's, that's how you're going to drown. Literally. You know, you got to stay afloat, bro. You got to stay calm and you just got to keep on going on, bro. Like, whatever you can do in that moment. Because, like, when the crowd, bro, you got to catch the, if you, all right, you got the attention now, yeah? And a fuck up happens, yeah? What's the next thing? You can either go down or you stay afloat, bro. Once you stay afloat, that's when, oh, whoa, this guy looks the way. Like, he can work the crowd like that. I'm like, Pfft. So what's an example? What did, what did you do specifically when bro, something I fucked up? Bro, I talk to the crowd. I'm not just going to, oh, no, quick, 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 hurry the fuck up. No, no bro. No, bro. You just got to be straight up, be yourself. And be like, live performances, baby. You know, <laughs> first flex exhibition, what can I say? You know? And then you just work the crowd, bro. You work the crowd. Bro, and that's credit to yourself. You and Jamie, when that beat fucked up and you two started crumping. I think we got to acknowledge that as well. Your profession is a dancer. That's what you do. I'm a performer, bro. I know performer. how to, yeah, I know how to work the crowd, bro. Bro, 
Yes, I'm a dancer. All right, let's go into like what I... I'm a dancer. First and foremost, this is where everything started, right? Michael Jackson, Usher, and Chris Brown, bro, in my bedroom. That's how little dancer Kip started, you know? <laughs> you know I was like, With the leg kicks, the back flip. Like, oh, yeah, boy. I was like, oh, yeah, all the time, man. Like, I had like my CD ROM, bro. CD ROM, put on my headphones, like, just in my mirror, bro. That's how the dancer came out. It wasn't until, man, I always wanted to sing. I always wanted to sing, always wanted to rap. But I was just like, shit has it writing and I just can never get like my notes right. And like my cousin's are always better than me, you know? So I'm like, nah, just stick to dancing, bro. Just stick to dancing. It's all good. Just stick to dancing. And it wasn't until, man, like that's when Bay City come around and you see everyone doing like, this guy's rapping, this guy's singing. I'm like, oh, what can I do? What can I do? You know, I'm not going to miss out, bro. Like, no yeah, way. I feel you, I feel you know, you. like, yes, I'm the dancer and I can teach you like a one, one, two or whatever. A little two step, all good. But man, I want to do what you can do, bro. Like, you know, so like the attention shifts. The I'm now looking up here as before they were looking at me like I was up here, you know. So it's like we both got something to offer. And then that's when the music started happening, bro. And then that's when I found my peoples and I just had like mad confidence. I'm like, man, he's all superstars, you know, like. You are who you surround yourself around. I said it before. You're going to surround yourself around a bunch of chefs. You're probably going to be a chef. You're going to be a bunch of footy players. You're probably going to be a footy player. If you're going to be a superstar, if you surround yourself around with superstars, you're going to be a superstar. Straight you know? up. Or you're going to have qualities on traits of one. For, you know, you might have your own, another group. Because it, you might have your other, you know, you might have another group that you go out and now you're like the top dog too. Because it kind of always happens because that's like how passing information just comes. Like it's just how it is like from A, B to C, you know. So you teach me something and then I teach, teach the next guy. Mm -hmm. But he thought that like I'm the fucking creator of this shit, you know. I'm the one who really, he's just looking up at me just like I looked up at you. Yeah. When what he has forgotten is you were shown this. That's why shown, you have the ability to show them. Yeah, 100%. And I was showing, yeah. And I was showing how to... Count my bars. I was showing how to um, even just play with auto tune. Like auto tune, in my opinion, is an instrument. It's not just a filter. You have to be able to sing in a certain way to play the instrument. Mm. You know, it's a very, it's a very funny one. Some people crack it. Some people don't. Is what <clears> it is. Um, but yeah, that's just that's the music aspect. So, so dancer, dancer, music, music. And last, I'd say I've been called a motivational speaker a lot, like a lot. But I talk like this in general. So superhero, motivational speaker. Bro, I'm just being Kip, man. I'm just being me, mm. you know? Kip is, I'm talking about myself as a third person. Like, I'm. <laughs> that's bro, how superhero friends do that's it, That's how superheroes do it, man. Like, Superman doesn't look at himself on the TV and think. Yeah. Look at the next man. No, I'm Superman. Mm. I did that shit. Because as I got older, because as I got older, man, so like Kip was, hey, I'm Kip. I'm Kip. As I got older, though, like I started hearing my name Darone a lot more and I really liked it. So I don't know. When I get a bit older, I reckon I might put Kip to rest and then fully go off Darone, man. But that's not, that's for the, I don't just want to be one Kip, bro. I want to create a lot. You know, so I want to be in a... Kip is an infection now, you know. I'm putting it out there. Like, keep it positive is the infection. And I hope that just spreads like wildfire, bro. Because everyone everyone can be Kip, bro. Not just me, you know, like, the next person. So whoever I teach, when, I, when I'm going out to, to, my, to my job or my work or what I do. So we'll talk about that soon. I like to give that service of just being my full self. So the next person can be their full self, you know. Um, kind of contradicting myself because I don't, I'm not going off the road, you know. So it's... But then you're showing them how... You're leading through example in by the sense of if I can do this, if I can be my confident self, mm. if I can portray that to you in a way that you're able to understand that, mm. you've done your job. And as you said, you've had enough trouble with your name being Darone. Imagine trying to tell like a 10-year-old boy, 
Oh, I'm yeah, Devone. Keep it positive. The kid's going to be like, fuck you. <laughs> I'm Kip. Keep it positive. The kid's like, that makes sense. Exactly, bro. Like, ah, oh, you make it so much easier for me, Dre. Like, you're always like, <laughs> it's cool, man. Like, you always know how to put in another perspective for me to understand anyway and the same shit that I've already been saying. But, man, that's fully right, bro. Because, like, they're like, oh, what does Kip mean? Because that's the question that they, oh, where mm-hmm. does Kip come from? Because I tell them, I'm like, oh, no, my real name's Darone. They're like, oh, well, where does Kip come from? Yeah, because they're just like, what the fuck's a Darone? No, like, what's a Darone? And I'm like, that's my name. <laughs> they're like, oh, well, where does Kip come from? I don't know. Kip means keep it positive. Keep on going on. These little habits and like just even that name, just branding myself, you know, fully accepting that Kip as this is me, you know, keep it positive, the positive guy. I'm like, well, what is Darone like then? Throne usually only gets said when I'm in trouble. So true, true. <laughs> true. <laughs> Throne! <laughs> and you're like, I'm sorry. Wait, it's like, call me Kip. Keep it positive. <laughs> keep it positive. Like, meet me on that level. Don't meet me on Throne. Yeah, don't, don't you be hitting with me that keep a positive bullshit. Each to their man. Like, it happens all the time. Um, ah, where do we go? No, next? but that, yeah, that's three important things. And one credit to yourself, and then back to all of that. Because you're like you're a dance teacher as well, yeah. So and that I'll is my that's my occupation, you know. Um, youth youth development, um, hip hop teacher. I like to say youth development. I don't like to say mentor. Like, yeah, I am mentoring them, but I'm helping them develop into their you know their own skin. You know, they're developing into themselves. I'm not. I don't have to mentor that. I just have to. You know, kids just want someone to watch them, bro. Mm. You know. I'm not gonna put words in your mouth, but mm. tell me, what is your goal when you're teaching young people? Bro, for them, I said it before, leave it better than you found it, yeah? So when I walk into that room, I want them kids to be better than they were before. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with them now, because it's not. But they got to realise that they are the best. They got to realise that there's like there's like a fine line between cockiness and confidence, eh? And... I see it at the classes all the time. Like, they'll be confident at the start, but they're cocky by the end of it, Maria. They're like, yeah, dark star. Like, they're going full out, eh? Like, just, I know that I bring that vibe and I bring that energy, but I just want to be able to show you that you can draw it out of yourselves too. Sometimes it just needs someone like me, some crazy, some crazy moldy like me to come out and just be like loud as bro and just not even care, you know? Because kids need that. They always get told what to do, man. Mm. And we don't listen, bro. We're the ones who are not listening. Bro, I say that all the time. We're telling these kids that you need to do this, you need to do that. Bro, you need to listen, bro. The kid, bro, you need to listen to the kids, man. Every time I leave a class, every time I leave a class, bro, I always feel better. Always feel more energetic. Why? Because these kids don't have filters. When the kid doesn't have filter, he can be so straight up and so raw with you and it's the best, man. It's the best constructive criticism you will ever receive. Give us an example. Very, ah. Uh, I got back, I got back from New Zealand like Monday, so about a week ago. And I walked in, I walked in the boys group and I'd seen all the boys and I was like, and uh, my accent must have just come back handy, like must have come back heaps, bro. And they were just pulling me up straight away. They're like, hey, hey, up to you, hey. Just like, oh, cheer, cheer, cheer. Cracking up, bro. I'm cracking up laughing. And I'm like, you fool, you are onto it, man. Like they they will call it as they see it. And that's the best way to be, in my opinion. That's how more people as, should be. All people should be. But they also say it from like a place of innocence and a place of, you know, a place of heart as well. Because like their their innocence has hasn't been like sometimes at that age like it hasn't been they're not corrupted yet not corrupted yet that's it they're not corrupted by any sort of negativity it's just like go 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 no stop you know and then that's that's like me too bro so when I go in there and I'm doing my thing they'll tell me if a move doesn't look cool or it looks girly or you know. <laughs> Well, they'll tell me straight up, bro. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay. It's like, we won't do this one, boys. We'll yeah, do another one. Next time I come, like, it's going to be straight up, like, just fierce. Like, 
you don't want girly, all right, then like, we're doing haka or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you were taking bride out yeah, of your Yeah, bro, you're like, all right, you don't want to do girly push-ups, boy. <laughs> Wait, but that's important because what you're doing is you're teaching young people especially how to be confident. Oh, and I'm listening to them too, bro, you know, and like sometimes they just stop talking because they're like talking to a brick wall, you know. Some kids, they just want you to listen, man. They don't even care. What do you think? They just want you to listen, bro. So, but these, you go. So yeah, if I walk into the room and like, and I'm not on point, I'm gonna hear it, you know. And they're gonna tell it too, and it's good. If you can't take that constructive criticism, bro, then I don't reckon you can take. You won't be able to take much in life, eh? Like, if you can't take criticism from a little kid, man, then like, what are you doing, bro? Like, like. Nah, nah, nah. Listen to the kids, man. The kids tell you straight up. No, that they're the future. They're the future, bro. So if they're the future, you gotta like listen to the future. But all right. So I've talked with youngers a lot, and I've talked with old people a lot too. You gotta be open to their knowledge, so you can lead the example for them to open up to your knowledge. Bah. Uh. Okay, so. I'm not just going to lay all my knowledge on you and expect you to listen and then I'll listen to you, you know. So do the right thing, listen to that kid and then then you start opening about knowledge because then you can have proper conversations, man, instead of just talking to a kid. Like I've had conversations with kids that are just, they're just like so mature, so mature in their mental. Like I had this kid, man, isn't it? This little kid man, his name was Jaden, and he was a little moldy boy too. And I was like meeting up with him for a bit. And what he was saying, man, was I want to grow up to be a policeman because my mum said that that makes good money and we don't have money. And I'm like, this kid knows. Mm. He's not a, he's already taking himself out of the He's already saying, like, I'm not doing it for me, I'm doing it for someone else. Service to others. And like that's Bro, it's like 12 year old kid I'm like what the hell like you should not have them stresses above you you should be talking about dreams and aspirations and I want to do this and I want to do that but then real life kicks in doesn't but it but then bro? real life kicks in you know they've been corrupted by that it's not corruption because it's just life as well so they were forced to grow up they were forced to grow up yeah I was forced to grow up but uh I don't know maybe just something different was about me that like didn't I don't, if I if I went without I didn't really care and it was all good. I'm sweet as. And now I look at this kid too and I'm like, bro, you're already thinking about your family first. Fano first. You know, Fano means family in, in Maldi. Like, you're already thinking about your Fano. You're already you're already worrying about are they gonna be okay in the next ten to twenty years, you know? And that's big man. So I'm th- I'm like, so before earlier I was talking about what's your why? This little kid already has a has a why. Straight you know? up, and he's 12. And it's strong as, bro. And I'm like, man, you have a great mental and a great heart to have a why like that. To put your whānau first and not yourself. Because I, re- uh, I look, because I always look at these like little kids, so I'm like, man, like, you could do this, you could do that. And then I think back and I'm like, I'm like, why didn't I do it? I probably didn't listen either. So, mm. you know, so it's like, that's all good. Each to their own, you know. You got Everyone has their own path and we're just giving advice, you know. Just like a show like this, we're just, just here to give advice and insight into what we have done or what you or me have done and it just helps for the next person, you know. So then they're like, oh, I, I kind of had a situation like that too or, you know, my why wasn't as strong so I fucking hated my job, you know. Mm. But I think you said something really important too. And you were saying when an older person talks to the younger person, and I'm just reflecting on the experiences that I've had while I've grown up. To the old people that listen to my story, they're the ones that I learned the most from because they were able to listen to what I had to say. Oh, yeah. And then translate the learning experiences that could have that they've come across in their life mm. by relating it to the experiences that I told them. So and that makes me more receptive to understanding them because I'm like, wow, this 
50 year old man's talking about shit that I give a fuck about. Yeah. He's pretty cool. Bro, because he was your age once upon a time too, you know what I'm saying? So, old people are cool, man. Literally. Old, old people are cool as, bro. All people are cool as, bro. All people are cool as. As long as you're yourself. That's it, man. As long as you're yourself, like. And not trying to pretend like you're something you're not. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. Let's talk about, um. Ah, right, let's talk about, let's talk about Young Kip. Right, quick. So, not even Kip. This is this, this is before Kip. This is, this is Darone, you know. How old was Darone at this point? So, Darone was born in Whakatane, New Zealand in 1994. Then he flew over. So, I flew over to Australia in end of 99, start of 2000. I think Jamie Taylor had just come over like a few months before me. We talked about it. I was like, you came here in 99? I was like, I did too. I was like, shoot. Yeah, it was a gangster. We didn't know each other for ages though. Anyways. Moved to Australia, single mum, just me and her, you know. We lived in <coughs> Packingham Street, bro, um, across from, what is it now? Chemist Warehouse, but it used to be called Franklin's, bro. True. Back in the day, bro, before um, IGA and stuff, it used to be called Franklin's, man. It used to be called Franklin's. We used to live on Hope Street. And I look back now, I'm like, Hope Street. I was like, what was going through my mum's head when 19 years old, you know, like, my mum had me young, 17, bro, and then I come over here four, three or four, so, like, mum's like 19, 20, you know. This young teen with a baby gets a house on Hope Street, right across from the, right across from the bloody supermarket, bro. I'm like, man, like, that would have buzzed me out, you know, like, oh, like, got hope, you know, mm. sense of hope, man, because I applaud my mum so much for... Making that decision, bro. Because I don't know too many people that have gone to another country at 19 years old with a four-year-old in their arms and moved to another country. You know, I know a couple, but not just by themselves. Bro, every individual that has done that is a soldier it, and they need to be rewarded. It's nuts, man. I'm like, my mom's my mom's strong, bro. She's strong as, bro. I'm like, that's crazy, man. Like, like, well, I'm going on 25 and like, I don't even have a young one yet. My mom was already like... I was already grown by the time I'm 25. My mum was 25. You know, so big, big ups to my mum, bro. Like, I remember humble beginnings, man. Tell us about it. Humble beginnings, bro. Where it started from. So we moved over here. Moved over here from Fakatane. <clears throat> then we we landed, landed in Oz, man. Landed in Oz. Stayed at my auntie's for two weeks. And mum landed a house on Packington Hope Street, man. And then that was it, bro. We had no furniture. Bro, we had paper plates. Like, we had plastic forks. We had, you know, I had a mattress on the floor. Mum had a mattress on the floor. We had nothing, bro. But it was gangster because we had our own space, bro. For the first time in a long first time. First time, my mum got her house, man, on Hope Street, bro. She got her stuff and it was hers, you know. Like, she got it, man. She did it. And now we just started doing it together, man. I remember carrying the washing down to the laundromat, bro, like big rubbish bags and like crying, bro, because like <laughs> five years, six years old. Look, it's raining, mum. It's raining. Like, I'm tired. But I knew, bro, as soon as we got to the as soon as we got to the laundry mat, bro, there's a cafe next to it and they sold the best hot chocolates. <laughs> so it was like the little things, man. So like, it was your little reward. Always the little things, bro. I remember the the next, like, we, we started getting furniture and we had a couch and that. We didn't have a TV, though. Mom went down to the Salvos, picked up, like, a $30 TV or something, like, this big cube-looking thing, bro. bro. Back when they used to be fucking yeah, big Yeah, man, they were heavy, too, bro. Like, we didn't carry this, bro. We, it was on, like, the um, it was on the roller thing, like, the, the TV stand it came on, bro. Like, we rolled that shit home. <laughs> and we took that home, bro, and I'm like, I got TV, yeah! Bro, that's us, man. I used to wake up early as, bro. Because Dragon Ball Z was on at 7, 8. Shout out Cheese TV. Mm, Cheese TV. You if know you're a real up, one, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're wrong, you know, you know what's up. 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock, Dragon Ball Z was on, bro. I had to get up at 6.45, bro. Because I had to go put the blanket on the TV and wait for the motherfucker to heat up. What? Bro, this thing, like you turn it on, you turn it on the TV and it just make a little circle like this. You know, and it would start changing colour, bro. $30, $30 TV, bro, from the Salvos. The little... Little thing like this, bro. Fifteen minutes later, pew, and this, 
it all changes colors and, stuff, <laughs> and then it's like yeah and then the song starts coming on like yeah <laughs> we fix. smash out all your breakfast yeah bro smashing all my wheat fix bloody toes dragon ball z like that's us man that's us and like that was that was the but that were the best memories bro and then the second tv we got was in my room i'm like yeah did you oh, have to heat this one up too? Oh, nah, bro. This one had a DVD slide in it, bro. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. That was a box, bro. But, oh, man, I played so many DVDs too. It was gang, bro. Like, that was that was the days, bro. That was the days. And, like, yeah, shout out to my mum, bro. Because, like, who knows? Like, I've got a lot of cousins back in New Zealand. And, like, they kind of went off the rails. And it's it kind of annoying back home. Because, like, <coughs> it's either, like, you're in the forestries. You know, cutting down trees. You know, you end up on drugs or something, or or you become or you join a gang. You know. Now, I don't know. I don't know what a, what my life would have panned out like when I, if I was back there. I don't reckon my nan would have had anything with me joining a gang. She would have like, smack straight across my ass, man. Like my my nan's scary, bro. Like, mm. <laughs> my nan's the real mobster, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Ah man, like I really, really like me and my mom have a really close relationship. You so do, like bro. if you don't have a close relationship with your parents, man, like get one now. Because it is gangster. It's so cool to have bro, all my friends call my mom mum. You mm. know. Everyone loves coming around to my house. Everyone loves coming around to my mum's house, you know. The food, it's always warm, it's always open, it's always just just warmth and love and, you know, just appreciation and a lot of respect too. Um Going from them humble beginnings, coming up to now, I'm like, mom, like you already like big gangster, like OG triple OG type vibe, like you know what's up, mom. And she's still kicking, she's still hard to this day, you know. She still, we still have them chats. We have me and my mom have different kind of geniuses. True. Yeah, me and my mom talk like this, bro, and it's gangster, bro, because not all parents. Everyone wants the best for their parent. Everyone wants the best for their kids, yeah. But the parents, I don't know, something changes when they get a bit older and they have kids, man. I swear like this, this shame comes over because they're not the best parent or... Interesting. Mm, you know, like, or their kid isn't doing the best. I don't know where that comes from. It's almost like, my kid's better than yours type shit, you know? And it's then, almost that like competition. Yeah, when it shouldn't be. Like, yeah, my kid's going to be better than But yours. not only that, bro. <laughs> it's really weird. Now that you just brought that up, it just brought my attention to it. If that's how you're focusing on your child, he's missing all the positive stuff. Missing, eh, oh, bro, all the positives, man. Like, oh, just like value, bro, and time. And not getting that look from their parents, like where you yeah, should be it's doing better. Little, so yeah, so the little things, like, all right, so I, I went all the way to the laundry mat with my, you know, big bag of clothes and the the little reward that I got was mean the biggest to me, mm. you know? And then it could just be a pat on the back or it just could be a thank you or you did a good job. Or a sweet from the cafe. Or a sweet from the cafe. Just any sort of appreciation towards your child does a lot. Like, a lot, man. Like, my mum big up me hard, eh? Like, she give me a slap whenever I need it, but she'd always be like my biggest fan as well you know so it's like where does this confidence come from that's what i was about to say i was like it comes from an old lady bro it comes from my mum. there's always don't be shame about it don't be shame shame bro shame people don't want to try just because of shame or they feel like they might get shamed you know mum was just always big on it's all right son you know it's all right son yeah, you'll Don't be right. Yeah. You'll be right, son. Like, because think about everything she went through, bro. If exactly, she had bro. any moment where she was like, I ain't got to complain about, bro. I ain't got squats to complain about. Like, yeah, I can talk about humble beginnings and stuff, but that was the best memories, you know. They were the best times. They were the simplest times, but they were the best times, and that's what created, um, just my value towards certain things i value emotion and appreciation way over any materialistic item you know wait say that one more time 
I appreciate and value emotions and appreciation more than any materialistic item. So, but why do you do that? Because it's worth more than anything, bro. So, if you change someone's state, bro, you can change someone's negative into a positive, yeah? Yeah, I could give you a, you know, fucking Ferrari and you'd be over the moon for like 10 minutes or something and you're like, yeah, gangster. But if you talk about appreciation and just love and, and value, it's it's worth more than that car, man, you know, because you get to take this forever, bro. You get to take all that knowledge and that, you know, someone might have done something for you, now you can do something for someone else. Why? Just because. It doesn't have to be a why to do what you do. Sometimes it is just because. Just because it is the right thing to do. Just because um, someone helped me in my past, so I'm going to help you in your past, like in your, towards your future, sorry. Someone helped me in my past, so I'm going to help you towards your future. You know, I got this information from another good homie and now I'm passing it on to you because you're my homie too. You know, it would be selfish of me to hold on to this gold. It would be selfish of me to hold on to these values and this appreciation. Because if I start holding on to it, I'm just going to leave it in there and it's not going to spread. If it doesn't spread, bro, then it, it can't be infectious and we can't be in a room surrounded of positive people. You know? So if I give you love and appreciation... Plus, I give you the car. I give you the car too. You can have it, bro. <laughs> then I'm having a great time. <laughs> you have a great time. I love and appreciate this stuff. <laughs> no, but it's sick because I think that's the first time we've ever explored values on different kind of genius. Like true, and the importance of them. And then knowing that they help, they almost act as like a compass. Oh yeah. Do you know what, like they act as like as, as a moral compass? Like moral you can compass, be like, bro. should I join a gang? Then there's a little part of you that's just like, no, you already <laughs> no. have one. You're family. <laughs> and you're just like, yeah, I don't need to go out looking for Funny other you things. you say that, bro, because like, I said that when I was in New Zealand too, because I, like, I seen some of the patched up and I wore that and I'm like, it's all, it's all G. Like, you can do what you want to do. It makes you feel better, then sweet. You're doing something good for yourself. All right, sweet. But yeah, I said the exact same thing. I'm like looking around because we had a big family reunion, eh? Like... Seeing all my cousins and all my aunties and everyone just in the one room. And I'm like, this is my gang, you know? Like, yeah, I got my boys, but like, this is the Fano, bro. Like, this is the gang. Like, this is where the, this is where all this happens, bro. Like, this is where the swagger comes from. This is where the, the talk, the lingo, the how I walk, how I, you know, dress, like, head tattoos, like, tattoos everywhere. People look at me like I'm like some gangster sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm gangster, but I ain't like, ain't no killer. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm no a murderer. gangster that represents his family. That's it. That's, so that's it. the set I because hold down. Because that is gangster, bro. Like that is being a real G, handling your business, bro. Looking after your loved ones. That is what my definition of a real gangster and real straight up G is. Like mom is, my mom is the triple OG because she moved to a different country looking for something better, found Hope Street and then boom, I'm sitting here, you know, 20 years down the track, talking about, thank you, mum. Thank you. I love and appreciate everything that you did for me. Thank you for everyone that has helped me come onto this spot right now. You know, because it's that love and appreciation and that, that gives it value, bro. That's where the value comes from. That is what creates the value. And once you have this value, bro, you can mold it. You can do whatever you want to it, but you can't hold on to it all the time. You have to pass the ball around, bro. Well, yeah. then new ones come your way. Exactly. Exactly. I remember I, take, I took all this big bag of clothes, right? Bro, all these fresh clothes too. Because every time I go to my cousin's, bro, like, I was like, oh, what, what drip you got? And he'll be like, oh, what you got from Aussie? I'm like, what you got from NZ, you know? So I just fucking started, cuz, take this, take this. Bro, this materialistic shit don't mean nothing to me, but it's the, the value behind, oh, my cousin's, he's gonna, I bet you he's gonna wear that tomorrow. I bet she's gonna wear that tomorrow. Next minute, walking all fresh out, you know, feeling gangster. I'm like, that's the value right there. That's the shit. Now I get to take your shirt and I get to feel gangster too, you know? But you know what's perfect about that? You get two great uses out of it. Reciprocated respect. Because think about it. If the I gang. just buy yeah, a Ferrari and give yeah. it to you, yeah, yeah, you yeah. only get the benefit out of that. 
But if I gift you something that has served me a purpose, mm. then it will now serve its purpose 100%, again. Hundred percent, bro. And like, it's almost like if that, like, if that, say, just that this T-shirt was like a person, bro. And now this person has. It can go out and get worn again. It can go out and fucking see the world, you know. It can go out. It has value again to it because before it was new, but now it's my old shirt. But now it's new to someone else, you know. So this is why I'm saying, you know, I keep passing the ball around, bro. And now this is going to impact my, my, my cousin, my old cousin. He's going to feel fleshy, going to feel flower, you know, because it feels like a new shirt to him. But really, it's just my old one to him. But that's all good. It's... The value, the respect, the love, the dedication, the whatever you want to call it, bro, like your aura or your reason for doing your reason. That's the word I was looking for, bro. Like your reason. What's the reason you do what you do? Why do you do what you do? I do what I do because I know that I can help the next person and that makes me feel good, you know? And if that makes me feel good, then like that's a good relationship, you know? It's a good way to start a relationship. It's a good way to start a relationship. Rather than, oh, I want something from you. That's why I'm going to choose to be your friend. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't want to be your friend because, you know, because of what you have. Materialistically, I want to be your friend. Probably because I just want to be your friend. Like, you know, a cool guy, you know. There, there doesn't have to be. You, I don't have like a, a checklist of what you have to do to be my friend. You know what I mean? You doing you. Is the only way you're going to be my friend because you can't be like me and I can't be like you, mm -hmm. you know? So I want you to be able to, I want you to be excited to come up because you have something to offer because that's how I feel. I feel like when I come to the table, I have something to offer. But that comes all the way back to what you were saying at the start and how you don't want to be at the top by yourself. No. Nah. But at the same time, you don't want to be at the top and having to drag people with you that don't want to be there. No. Nah. Rather, you'd want nah. people... To elevate with you, so when we're all at the same level field, you're here because you weren't it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, that's perfect, Dre. That is perfect. I got here because of this is what I did. And you got here because this is what you did. And now we have something to talk about, you know. And we can talk about our trials, our tribulations, our struggles, our wins, our losses. And now we can... We got, we've, because we've been on this massive journey, bro. And like now we've come to the, like this mean, mean new patch of grass and we're like just lounging for a bit, talking about how we got here, you know. And I'm interested to know how you did it because this is how I did it and this is what worked for me. Well, not only that, through you sharing that experience with me and me sharing my experience with you, next time we go to take the plunge, I've got the information that you've learned. And the information that you've learned from me. 100%. My next move, sure, it's going to be a bit of a nice one. Now your sword's sharper. It can slice, can slice through anything, you know? You know, like, your mind's still now. Now you can draw back that arrow, bro, or just execute, you know? They don't have to hesitate because other people have also been there as well. So it's all good. It's all good. It's okay to fail, man. Like, it's... Fail, fail, win. Fail your way to success, man. If you take that test like a hundred times, say you, you take a math test, I bet you, if you take it a hundred times, the same exact same test, you'll get better and better and better. Bro, even simpler than that. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen you teach it. Teach a handstand. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. fucking can't do that shit. <laughs> I try it once, like just hit the deck. Yeah. You try it, you can fucking walk around and shit. Yeah. <laughs> All these other people try it and they're just like, why do I do what Trey does? I'm like, because Kip, has practiced, practiced, practiced. And now because he's put in all that work, mm -hmm. now he can walk around on his hands. Now I walk around my hands and I can show you how to do it too. You know, like, practice, practice, practice. That's, that's really good on man. That's important, bro. Practice, man. But fuck, Kip, what's next? You've what's done all next this. So, what is next? So I moved over from, sorry, from, from Young Darone. So I've talked about the Rhone, moving over, single mom, Hope Street, Franklin's, humble beginnings, leading up to, you know, girls calling me Kip, bedroom dancer, <laughs> you know, bedroom dancer hard. In front of my own mirror. In front of my own mirror, just thinking I'm the man. I'm like, yeah, I'm the man. I'm like, just gangster. Going into... Um, I'm going into now. Well, 16-year-old Kip, 
Killing Girls. What was next? We haven't really talked about what I'm up to now, eh? What are you up to now then, bro? All right. What am I up to now? I'm always on tour, bro. Like, I'm always on the go. Tour doing what? It's funny, man. Like, all right, my, this, like, last nine months has, like, been a massive change. So, before, I had a nine to five and I was still teaching dance and I was still training, yeah? Hurt my shoulder. Couldn't go back to work. But I could still dance. So, I'm like... It's a blessing in disguise. I can either say, oh, no, my shoulder, my shoulder. Oh, I can't do this. Can't do that. Nah, keep it positive, man. Positive habit. Boom. I can still dance. Made a dance company. <laughs> <laughs> um, made a dance company and also work with other companies. What's your dance company called? So my dance company is called Legion Dance Company. Legion Dance Co. Just quick little story. I was going to be named Legion when I was younger. So when my mum was at school writing all these baby names, like Darone, Legion, and there was like another one. I, was like, I think it was I think it was Jarone, like J-A-H. Jarone? Yeah, Jarone. I was like, mum, that's gangsta. I'm like, <laughs> Darone. I'm like, do you know how much trouble I get with Darone? <laughs> I was like, even Legion. But anyways, LDC, Legion Dance Company. I got the name from my mum after I researched it. Legion comes from the Spartans, man. 300 Spartans. You know the movie 300, bro? Mm. Legion. Like, that is a Legion, bro. Another name for a, for a mob or just like a, just a driving force of just shooters, bro. Like, I really liked, I really liked 300. And I really liked Legion. So I'm like, send it. Let's do it. It's LDC. Perfect fit. Yep, LDC. And when we're talking about LDC, so LDC stands for Legion Dance Company and it also stands for Loyalty, Diligence and Confidence. So LDC, Loyalty, Diligence and Confidence. I made a dance company. Sorry, I made a company that utilizes dance as a tool. Mm. So Legion Dance Company u- utilizes, like it is still like a dance school, but with positive impact, positive, massive po- positive influence. Almost so, a focus on those three things. Loyalty, diligence, and confidence. Loyalty to yourself, man. Diligence and persistence to yourself because that builds that confidence, yeah? So when I'm saying loyalty to yourself, if you say you're going to get up and go to the gym at 6 o'clock for the next six days, or three times a week even. Don't don't go too crazy on, you know, loyalty to yourself. It's creating a discipline. That's what loyalty to yourself is. Creating discipline. So we're talking about disciplines earlier. Keeping it positive. That's my mental habit. That's a discipline. Um getting up every morning and just having, you know, a healthy breakfast. Discipline. Um, not saying I always have healthy breakfasts. I love bacon and eggs. So <laughs> it's my jam. But you try. I try. I try. It's all about balance, man. It's all about balance. <laughs> um, diligence and persistence to yourself. So diligence, like, all right, you stayed loyal. Now it's time to stay persistent. Don't fall off. You know, you're almost there. Don't fall off. You're almost there. You're almost at that goal. You know, you only got one more training session left. Once you finish it, you're going to be full of confidence and self-worth because you stayed loyal, you stayed persistent, and it, it came out on top. That builds that confidence. You keep putting that into, into work, stem three, boom. It starts becoming the keep it positive habit. The KIP, the mindset. The KIP mindset, I'm going to label it right now. The KIP mindset, the keep it positive, keep on going on mindset comes from loyalty, diligence, and confidence. Because it's kind of hard to teach confidence, you know what I'm saying? Jamie Taylor. Go away, Jamie Taylor. (laughs) (laughs) We're busy. We're busy. (laughs) But back to you, you just established your dance school? Yeah. So LDC, Legion Dance Crew. Loyalty, diligence, confidence. 
I like to not only dance, but I like to talk about why I dance and how I got there. So, LDC, like I'm 24 years old, started a dance company, and I also work with other companies purely on dancing. Dance is my, it's my trade. If I was a chippy, dance would be my trade. So I created this package, this LDC package with the KIP mindset, okay? Let me explain to you this package. The LDC package, loyalty, diligence, confidence, all right? I can talk about it all day long, but I need to be able to show you too. So that's where the dance aspect comes in. I'm not just going to be dancing with myself though. I'm going to be dancing with other dancers because I can show you all the moves and like you, you're going to eat it up. You're going to think it's gangster, right? But then you start looking like this, right? But now I've got a whole team around me. That's proving teamwork, bro. That's showing that I'm surrounding myself around the best dancers, not even the best dancers, the dancers with the best mindset as well. Because we're doing it for the next person, you know? So it's like, the only way I can express my full self is by dancing, singing, or talking, you know? So I created LDC to have the whole package. This is a process that you can learn so you can take out to the next person. Loyalty, diligence, and confidence. You have you now have the three tools to achieve a goal. If you have the tools to achieve a goal, man, you can achieve anything. And you can show the next person how to do that too. So it's like everything I do is always like I always try to like, I don't know, if something feels funny about me, like I'm really getting funny about it now talking about it. Cause like it's like it's not for me, like it's for you. You know? It's not I'm I myself is way out of it. Yes, I have to be here in order for me to express it and show you the process. You're the facilitator. Yes, but I'm always thinking like long term. So that's what I'm talking about. I got these tattoos all on my body for long term. You know, they have meaning behind them though. I'm doing this LDC project for long term because it has meaning behind it. I'm not just doing it just because. I do do stuff just because, but this isn't one of them, you know. It makes me feel good being able to show you that kid, show you that, that's cool, show you the kid because the kid starts smiling and the parents start smiling, you know? And then that relationship is like, oh, mom, mom, I did this, I did that. I'm like, that's the stuff. Now they got something to talk about, you know? Something positive to talk something about. Something positive to talk about. Because now the, oh, the parents going to, I've done the job for the parent now. All they have to do is just, you know? Be there to support. Be the biggest fan. You know, and that's it, man. Like, it's not that complicated of why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it's for someone else. I'm doing it because I have all this value and it's selfish of me to hold on to it. So I have to be able to put it in a perspective that a young kid can look up to it. You know, I need to be able to put it in a perspective that a parent can trust me with their kid. You know, I put it in a perspective that this is worth something. This is worth, not even something, this shit is valuable. Like, you cannot get this anywhere else. Like, you probably can, but the way that I do it is me. So, no one else can do me. So, I know where else you're going to get it. I haven't seen it anywhere else. But I've seen it in, yeah, different sports. And everyone, every single sport or every single art form, anything that has to do anything with pursuing has... Motivation has a way of wanting you to get more, bro, and just be hungry, you know, hungry for that goal. So I'm creating, created LDC as literally a care package that you can take for the rest of your life, bro. Like, all these values I set over here will help you, I'm telling you, will help you later on in life. If and if this, not, yeah, yeah, you go. If this kid has all these values, they're gonna be start talking like this to their parents, bro. And their parents don't want to hear it, you know, because they haven't let them open to 
letting new information in. It's like trying to teach an old dog new tricks, you know. But we're not dogs, man. We're human beings and we can learn stuff every day. We are always processing information. We are forever learning. We are for always the student, never the teacher, you know. Yes, you can teach, but you're always the student. So it's like, I have something to teach that I learned from somewhere else. Now I've reverse engineered it, made it my own, dressed it up, made it scuck says, <laughs> made it me, you know. Now it's going on to the next. And now I've got these little kids saying, oh, true, you know, like, I'm <laughs> too good. I'm too, oh, what's up, bro? Like, and it's just mad vibes, bro. It's mad energy. And there's nothing wrong with anything I'm doing because all I'm doing is drawing out that best version of yourself, you know. Not even helping you draw it. Just find it, bro. Sometimes it's just, sometimes people know it's there. They just don't, can't be bothered, you know. They just can't be bothered with putting in... Bro, it makes sense because for you pulling it out of them, it's the first time that it offers the people that you're working with an opportunity in case they have never felt like this before. They're like, oh, so this is what this feels like. This is what it feels like, bro. And once you take that, bro, you, that's like, it's like an addiction, man. Like you want that vibe all the time, you know. So that's when you start hanging around other people who are like that too. And then you start bouncing off. And then it starts getting bigger and you have this big vibe and then start, people start looking at you and then they're like, oh, what's happening in there? And like go in there and like, oh, wow, that's mad. So that's know? what I want to do. And then it gets bigger. And then like, that's, what, that's how basically happened. You know, that's how basically happened. Attention. Uh, attention from just being ourselves. And if you're not yourself and you're just going to fake it, it's going to come out sooner or later, you know. So... Best you just put all your flaws to the front and like, this is me. This is whole me. Accept it whether you want it or not. Because at least that way, bro, like you got nothing to hide. You got nothing to hide behind. There's no shame. There's nothing, nothing in the back of your mind that's, oh, man, what about this or what about that? Everything is to the front, to the forefront, and it's just head on, bro. And it's, you just run it straight, bro. And you just run like, like you... Like you're getting chased by a fucking cheater or something, you know? But then, bro, it also <laughs> lets, it lets the person on the other side know what they're in for. Hmm. Like, if I came to you and was hiding certain things and then it gets exposed later on, you're going to feel a certain type of way about yeah. that. Like, why don't you tell me that shit, man? Yeah. But if I tell well, you from the very beginning, hmm. you got nothing to be you surprised know, about. Like, oh, you heard about that too? <laughs> 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 Like, it's all good, man. Like, everyone has flaws. Nobody's perfect, bro. Everyone's imperfections makes up their, pe like, perfection, you know? like Because that's what makes them. That's what makes them, bro. Everyone's DNA is different. So it's like, who are you to say what's perfect and what's not? So everyone is different. And that's what I see perfect, bro. Because like, if we're all the same, man, we'll just be all, you know, just be boring as, like. I mean, nothing would change. Nothing would change. We'd all have the same problems and we'd just be talking the same smack all the time, you know? Like it. That'd be painful. It'd be painful as, and it wouldn't be like, there'd be no substance to it, bro. Like, no, just, oh, I know exactly what he wants because he's exactly like me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so I'm going to give him the same conversation yeah. that he expects because yeah. he's exactly like me. It's just like, bro, be yourself, man. Be yourself. Being yourself is the superhero, bro. That's the way to be, man. Keep it real, bro. Just be straight up, man. And if you're straight up, then you got nothing to worry about, bro. If you got nothing to worry about, then you're always, man. Like you're on your way. You got time, and you got, you know, you got all, you know, you got got your. I had a decog with my cousins, and this is the way we put it. Um, sometimes you got to empty your basket, okay, so you can pick up new information. So my cousins were telling me some cool stuff, and I was telling them some cool stuff. So I'm like, oh, I'm gonna put that one in my basket, cuz. I'm gonna put that one in my basket. And uh, that's how we that's how we spoke. And it was really good because uh, the stuff we were putting out in our basket was valuable. It had meaning. It's like, oh, it's just one of them, oh mate. Yeah, oh, that's why, you know. So it's like if you have something to offer and I have something to offer, 
then we both may as well empty our baskets and start picking up each other's shit, you know, and start taking it because take each other's advice. You can talk like this and you can talk on a deeper connection and you can really look in eye to eye and see the emotion and connection and like it's the way to be, man, because if you can't talk like this, how are you meant to... How you just, I don't know, I don't know. people probably do it every day. How are you supposed to learn, bro? How are you supposed to learn, bro? How are you meant to, you know, you got a full cup already. So you're like, my, my cup's the shit. I'm just going to drink. This is my drink. It's the only shit I drink. Like, I want some new flavors, you know. I want I want that, you know, chocolate milk, twist twist, I don't know, raspberries or something. I don't Wait, know. I want a little bit of old me. Yeah. Mixed with a whole bunch of new me. 100%. I'm like, fuse it together. Like, do the fusion dance in Dragon Ball Z and poof, got this. Superhuman Dre, you know, <laughs> you got this hybrid kip. Because <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just a combination of old Dre, new Dre, mm. same Dre, same Dre, just better, you know. And it's gangster, and it, that's cool, bro. That's cool. These fusion dance, bro. You're like poof, hybrids, you know, you're like better than before, better than you left it. It's always sometimes it sounds greedy to say better, better, better all the time, better, 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 but it's just like. Well, when I rock up, like, it was good, but it wasn't great. It wasn't phenomenal. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't what I think the potential it could be. You know what it is? Replace the word better with grow. Ooh. We don't look at a tree and think, look at that tree, just get better and better and better. Yeah, tree, look at that tree grow, man. I like that, bro. I like that. That's a different kind of genius right there. I see. I see. Bro, they're, <laughs> wait, they're your words. No. Yeah. They're your words, not bro. mine. Wait, but it's interesting. I think we're at that time of the day. And I think you already know what I'm about to ask, mm-hmm. but I'm interested to see what you have to say. Mm. But Kip, what's one thing that you wish you were told as a youth? I probably got told everything. Like I probably got told everything, man. But uh, the one quote that I took on as a youth, 16. It's probably about youth day, yeah. 16, going into my teens. I have asthma, right? So, when I heard this, man, it was like, so what you're saying, what, what, what did you want to be told as a youth? And I heard it, and I listened, okay? Motivational preacher, hip-hop preacher, person called Eric Thomas. I was on my positivity, just brain game, at 16 this is the one quote that stuck with me for so long even now it's on my it's on my laptop it's it's everywhere if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe then you'll be successful so a guy having asthma but i hated running but then i started putting in that if you want it as bad as you want to breathe if you want it as bad as you want to breathe bad as you want to breathe bad as you want to breathe that's when you start that's when the you know that's when you start pulling that other guy out, and that real person starts coming out and starts running, bro. Starts running that cardio. I hate cardio, bro. I hate it, but I knew it was good for me. <laughs> I knew it. So I'm like, you can take what I also like to say. So like, that's what influenced me. Okay, that's what influenced me. If you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you will be successful. That's the that's what I took. I'm like, how bad do you want it, bro? Do you want it as bad as you want to breathe? You know? So I took it seriously. And that's what stuck with me. That's what helped me. Another one that I wish I had thought I had heard at the same time is fail, 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 win. Fail until you win. Do not be scared to fail. Because I was thinking, as bad as I want to breathe. But when I was thinking that, it's like, how bad do I really want it? So I have to execute like on my first go. So what I would say to myself back then, because I was already on that motivational gang, is fail. Don't be scared to fail. Just send it, bro. I'll be saying that a lot later, actually. Just send it, bro. Don't worry about failing, bro. Just send it. I reckon that that's what I say to the kids. Like, what did... What did I want to hear as a, as a youth? I heard it and I took it on. But if I was talking to my younger self now, my little 16-year-old self now, I'm like, bro, don't even worry about failing. Just send it, man. Like, just have a crack, bro. Because you never know what could happen. 
And you can always pick yourself up. You can always pick yourself up. And I like to say, all the ifs and buts will make you nuts. Mm. Mm. So don't have no ifs or buts, man. Just send it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. At least you tried. At least you're not scratching your head sitting there. Oh, man. Uh, but what if what if I did that? Or oh, man, what if I, I did maybe this? Maybe it could have worked. Maybe it could have worked. Well, this whole time you're thinking about could have worked. You should have just done it, man. It's a waste of energy, bro. Waste of energy, bro. So just fucking send it, bro. Send it. Don't be scared to fail. How bad do you want it, man? Do you want it as bad as you want to breathe? If you don't want it that bad, then your why mustn't be strong enough. You know, the reason why you want it mustn't be strong enough. Is it because of the reward? Is it because of how you look, your social status? Or is it because you're helping someone else? If you're doing it for something other than yourself, then that's usually a pretty good why. That's a pretty good way to start. You know, that's a positive influence because you're doing service to others. You're helping the next person. And if that makes you feel good, then I feel like that's a good relationship, not with only the person you're helping, but within yourself. Okay? You got to have a good relationship within yourself too. So, don't be scared to fail. Send it. How bad do you want it? Do you want it as bad as you want to breathe? If you don't want it that bad, your why mustn't be big enough. If you do want it that bad, then you don't even have to worry about sending it because you already know. You already know that if I want it that bad, I'm going to send it, bro. And I'm going to, nothing's going to stop me. I'm just going to, all my flaws to the front. I'm going to line my target up, bro. And I'm just going to execute every single time. If it fails, then at least I tried. And then you'll worry about it then. I'll worry about it later, man. Like, oh, well. I tried it. Yeah, you can't be worried. I don't take losses, bro. I only only take lessons. Take no losses. Take all lessons. No losses at all. No losses. The only thing I'm losing, you know, is like any bit of shame or hate that I have within myself. That is it. That's the shit that can go. You know, any sort of insecurity or whatever. Everyone has insecurities. You just got to be lose that shit. Yeah, facts. Lose that shit. Send it, man. Send it. How bad do you want it, bro? You want as bad as you want to breathe? All right. If you don't, why? Put those little disciplines into perspective. If it helps you, it helps you. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Everyone's different. Wait, but then those are three very important things in succeeding. I feel like it's brought me this far. I've gone out of my job. I'm doing what I love doing. I get to travel. I get to influence kids every day. I get to go out and make other people smile. Bro, I like to put myself as... I've never Googled this. I might Google it later. I'm a viber. A viber. I change people's vibe. I have the power. My superpower is to be able to change a person's mental state like that. Me and Frank talked about it. Recipes, my boy Frank. We talked about changing people's mind states, bro. If you walk into a room, bro... And you just have this, you know, you have that swagger about you, bro. Because you're yourself, yeah? So I'm good in my own skin. I'm sweet as in my own skin, bro. As soon as I start talking to that person and start talking about that person about, they might be feeling down, you know? They might be feeling, they, they ain't on my level, bro. I'm on a high frequency. I'm always just buzzing. Why? Because my why is strong. Every day I'm doing what I want to do. Everything I do has meaning. Why wouldn't I be hyped about that? Where's your why? Where's your meaning? Not even where is it, bro. What is your why? Mm. What is your meaning? You know, tell me about it, bro. I'll listen. You know, you started, bro, you're already in that guy's mind. You've already changed his state because now he can really talk about what he really wants to be like or what his real aspirations are, what his real goals are without having someone who has no judgment, bro. You can tell me like whatever, man, no judgment. Bro, what you're doing there is you provide opportunity. 100%, bro. And why not provide opportunity? You know, what's there's nothing, it's not taking energy out of me. If you feel good at the end of it, sick. Gangster, good relationship. What's up, bro? My new friend. (laughs) You know? If you take it in a negative way, which I don't know how, because as long as I'm coming from a place of heart and it's real, then... We should have no problems. We should have no problems at all. Um, 
Because you have to be open just like I have to be open too. So all my walls are down. All your walls are down. Because not giving a shit about what people think about you can almost make you the most empathetic bro. You don't give a shit what anyone thinks about you. So that habit has already in your mind. So I don't give a shit about what you say, bro, because there's no judgment here. Mm. You know? So there's no judgment here. I don't give a shit what you think about me. And, you know, because then this is when this relationship comes in. This is when you dive in deep. I don't mean like talking about don't give a shit. Like, I, I fucking love you, bro. Like, give heaps of shits. But you're... Overall, just like image, because I might be portraying something that I'm not meant to be, or you might not think it's the right thing, you know. And you always get people like that too, because everyone's different. But if you know within yourself, you're within your own skin, and you know that you don't give a shit about what people think, then that means you, as you said before, create opportunity and a platform for people to actually express themselves without having someone judge. So I might have the craziest ideas ever, you know, and I do. And I tell them to you and you might think something different of it or, you know, I'm trying to put it into a good example. But I just feel like if you don't give a shit about what other people think about your image and you feel good about your own skin, then you should also do that for the next person. So you should, I don't give a shit about what's on your mind, bro. Like, I don't give a shit. You know, like, it's all good. I'm, I'm full comfortable, full confident within myself. How can I help you? And what you've done is you create the starting point. Yeah. So like if, I, yeah. if I have a conversation with you and I acknowledge that we both really don't give a fuck, mm. then it's sweet because then our conversation turns into, okay, so what do you give a fuck about? Yeah, that's good, bro. Ooh, you pull me up there. But it's the truth. Yeah, it's the truth, bro. Like, what do you care about then? And I'm like, man, I care about, you know, I care about my family. I care about my sisters, my brother, my cousins. I care about all my boys. You know, and then, well, why? Well, because we do this and they, they make me feel like this. Like, oh, now it's getting bigger and bigger, you know. And now you're being appreciative and reflecting on all the good shits in your life. I don't care. I don't talk about randoms and stuff. Like, I don't... When I talk about not giving shit, I'm talking about just... You're talking about the people you connect with. Yeah. They let me be me and I let them be them. And I love that. That's, That's why I, you associate with that. And I, and I surround myself around that too because it's real and it's raw and it's, it's not fake. It's your people. It's my people, bro. It's your people. It's my people and I love it. I love my people. Like everyone, man. So much love. That's, oh, well, fuck. I guess now we're at that point. Tell the people where they can find you. You can find me on Instagram at kipkong underscore. Um, I'll be posting all on there. Check out my page. That's where you can contact me if you want to. Anything to do with um, youth, youth development programs, school programs, anything to do with, uh, say, block parties or community parties, performances, hit me up. If you just want to chat, you want to talk, you want to have a deep cog, you know, on the, in, on the inboxes, hit me up. If you, you know, having a bad day, need perspective, you need that, you know, just that good, that good juice, that good vibe, that, that pick me up. Like, I got you. I got, always on the vibe, like... I always used to say, like, I've got so much confidence, like, I could give you some and still have more than you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the truth. That's what you do to young people. You empower them. Uh, and they give me the confidence back, man. It's, it's reciprocated respect, bro. You know, like, if you, I don't expect, I give without wanting to receive. But when you keep on giving, you end up, people end up giving back, you know. That's just how it is. And this is, that's just how it goes. And it's a... It's a beautiful relationship, you know, because I've got something to offer. And not only do I have something to offer, they feel good about offering their thanks too. You know, they want to give their value and their thanks. And they all they want from me is to see that appreciation. And that's exactly what I want from them too. So every time I give, all I want to, all I just want to see is just love and appreciation. You know, like, like just thank you. Like, I don't, I don't ask so much at all. And it's always weird. It's kind of weird when I get compliments and stuff. I'm like, oh, like, I don't want to like get a big head or anything. But all they're doing, it's rude of me if I don't appreciate their kind gesture, you know. So be open to compliments and stuff as well and giving. And 
It's a good relationship, man. Like you keep giving, stuff just happens, man. Like, bro, it's 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 a simple like it's like almost like a universal law. It is, yeah. I have yeah, straight up, bro. Like whatever you give, you're gonna get back. Yeah, be a like, fuckwit. People will treat you like a fuckwit. Oh, fuck straight wit. up, bro. You put out that vibe, and you gonna get it back, whether it's positive or negative. Sometimes it feels like all the posit- all the negatives are coming at once. And that's all good. Keep it positive, bro. Because you just put another vibe out there, you know, and it bounces back again. Might not be like straight away, but it might not come at all if you're trying to put out them positive vibes expecting something, you know. That's real. So now that's a fake ass vibe. So like, hey, don't put that out, mm. you know, like. Because you'll get those back. You'll get those back. So exactly. 100%. It's like a reflection, man. Bounces back. So it's like, I'm putting myself out there to portray my image of positivity, you know, loyalty, diligence, and confidence. And I'm not, I'm just putting it out there just cause, just because I think it's the right thing to do. Um, and when it comes back, when it comes back, it comes back tenfold. Like it comes back big, man. Like in waves too. I said, man, like I'm putting out that that virus of just the KIP virus, bro. Like you're infected now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the decog, the, the the KIP virus, man. You put it out there, and when it comes back, bro, like I'm almost like scratching my head sometimes. I'm like, what just happened, man? I'm like, I just like these base cities as my prime example because I put them we put them vibes out and it just started like I just got to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger because the vibes were perfect they were right they were right vibes going out there so as soon as you put that vibe out there it's not only to just come back it goes like this bro because there's not just me and you now you know there's like, there's like everyone everyone so it's just boom boom it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and this energy creates bigger and bigger and this aura and this just overall you know wave bro and people were just like oh, what is that how do i be a part of that how did that happen what but what created that and now it's cool because now we just used to not even used to we just back each other bro it's a team and game that that motive or that just sense of just that value of backing each other bro it's togetherness i've met random people and they're like oh yeah like i love the boys because all you guys just back each other i'm like you get it you understand you understand why this happened because all we did was supported each other all we did and then the five boom 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 bigger 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 pew, pew, pew. and it just stack 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 bigger 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 and next minute, it's so big that everyone's starting to look in. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that it's huge because it's not. It's tiny. On a big scale of like, say, just like, I don't know, people can call it rap scenes. or want to call it a scene, a, a mob, a vibe, or anything. Whatever you want to call it. There's, there's scenes everywhere, man. Like, every city, there's always music going on. Doesn't matter what kind of music. Could be like the local pub, you know. Everyone's just jamming out to the... To the karaoke. Like, that's a vibe, man. Karaoke's gangster. But when you're doing something like, this ain't karaoke. Like, these boys and this vibe was raw. It didn't get better. Like, we watched it grow, man. We watched it grow. I reckon it's been three years now. And we've just, like, watched it grow. And grow in the right way, too, I think. Because everyone is just so supportive of each other. They're just backing each other. And that's all we wanted to do. You're like, yes, we got these big aspirations of dreams of being superstars and being the best artist or best whatever, the best. But you got to surround yourself with the best too. And we're just looking at each other. I'm like, we are gangsters. Like, we're goats, bro. Like, like not trying to yes, man, or not trying to just big up, but like really messing with each other, bro. Like. That's how you get put in the right direction. Yeah, I'm like, man, we're all on the same page. Like, everyone wants a little bit more. Everyone's hungry, bro. And we've been hungry now. Bro, now it's time to eat, bro. It is time it's to time eat. It's time bro. to eat, man. And 2020, like, we eating. Oh, man. man. Oh, it's 
gonna be a feast, bro. It's gonna be so good, bro. Like it is it is already good, like it is so good already that like it's gangster ass. Like it's so like everyone's in their vibe, everyone's in their in their shit, like everyone's in their car and they're just gunning for it, bro. Everyone's going hard and like yeah, we're gonna say like 2020 is a year but like we say that we've been saying that every year it's because every year is our year bro every year is our year and it's just like yes because we live in right now eh? like right now right here and then you keep having a lot of them right now right right here right now moments and it's just like this big movie reel of unbelievable moments you know and it's just like wow this has been three years and now like we're coming up and oh, it's just, just that gut feeling, bro, and just that know of just, you know it's going to pop. You know it's going to work. There's nothing about it. There's too many people putting there's in. There's too many. There's too much going on that like, there's like too many people rolling the dice, bro. Some of them's going to get double sevens. Like, you know, some, there's too many. And I, 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 I full believe it. I full believe it. I reckon every single one. Usually you have a, you know, you have a group of 10, six will make it. But because everyone is so different, that's what makes it hard. I'm like, the only way it's not going to happen is if you stop. So it's like, keep doing you and that's all they've been doing. And I'm like, and that just big ups me, motivates me to do, keep doing me. You know, I like to see my other homies. So I was talking about that vibe, you know, that vibe. I like to see my other homies doing their thing, you know, because I was like, oh man, like he's doing that shit, <laughs> get, a, get on my shit, you know, I'm going to get to work, you know, look around, see see Lord over there, he making another song, dropped another song, see Juice over there filming a music video, you know, I see Social Blight out on, on the animations, you know, you you dropped another decog, like episode, what, what, how many episodes are you up to now, like 20 plus or something? 25 this month, oh, bro. Oh, bro, like, look at that, man, shit is gangster, bro, and it's so big, bro. And it's getting bigger. And that's I'm like, man, this is this is like this is the shit that we always talked about, bro. Like superstars. Like I remember the bro Frank man, like just quick story. We used to bro, Fobalicious, bro. We were just we were the shit, man. Like we we knew it. Shout out Jonah. I think he got into everybody. No, oh, bro, we man, I was waiting for Jonah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, nah, Jonah, Jonah, Jonah. Jonah helped me out, you know. <laughs> put the put the Brown Brothers on the on the big screen. He was like, "So I can say that." He really did. He I had, really I had did. tips in my hair. People, like, they were calling me Leon. Like <laughs> your Frank story, Fabulous, bro. We knew we were like as soon as we walked in anywhere. The Brown Brothers were here, man. Like it was always a vibe, always loud, and it was always fun, man. And it was always as soon as we entered a room. We change people's state, their state of mind, their vibe. We're vibers. We create. We just come with this natural flow of just fresh boys. Like it's, it is what it is, man. And we, yeah, I still talk, still talk to the Lord today. I'm like, bro, we're doing the exact same thing, just on a bigger scale. We're still rocking up to shows and parties, and still being the shit, and still killing it. We're still, we're still walking like, I'm talking like, there's like a fine line between confidence and cockiness. I'm telling you, this is confidence. This ain't cockiness, you know, because I know, because we've been doing this for so long that we haven't like, Nucky's always been the fly guy, you know, Frank Tank always been the boss man. Me, I've always been like the dancer, like, oh, dancer, fresh guy. Gangster, Skux Deluxe. Skux Deluxe. Yeah, bro. Skux Deluxe. Skux Deluxe. Remember that, bro? Skux Deluxe, man. Just another word for like, you know, fresh. It was just it's my cousin's lingo, like it's just how we walk, we talk, how we want it to be, because we are already in our own skin, you know. We we're hanging around other brown brothers, so we felt, you know, this but they were Maldives, Tongans, there was heaps of brown brothers. But when you come to a different country, like all the brown brothers are the cousins, you know? Yeah, we got so, it. Yeah, got it. Like we band together, man. Africans, Tongans, <laughs> like there's no like there's Correct. no like we're all here together. But no, nothing's changed, man. Because we didn't change. We only got better. So we took some of the old Dre, some of the old Kip, some of the new Kip and <laughs> hybrid, you know? We fused, Gangsta. bro. Gangsta. I walk into a room, still change the vibe, still set the tone. But now it's got meaning. 
Before, it was just like to get the girls and show off, you know, and be the coolest one in the room. But now, positivity is the one, man. Positivity is cool, bro. Positivity is the coolest, bro. It's almost a positive purpose. Positive purpose, bro. Like, such a positive Pollyanna, eh? <laughs> keep, keep it positive. Keep it positive, man. There's nothing wrong for it, bro. It's helped me, so... It should help everyone it should else. Help everyone. If it doesn't, then let me know. <laughs> oh, well, like that. Just if it doesn't, keep trying. Keep trying, man. You'll figure out yours. Diligence, bro. Persistence. You're not gonna say it's, it's, bro. It's painful, but it's so worth it. So worth it. So it's the worth the most, the most. Because not only did you not have to change yourself, but you were so confident in yourself that you just got to 10x that person. You got to expand upon that person. You got to find new traits about that person because you didn't go off and try to be like someone else and do all the other things that someone else likes to do. You did stuff that you like to do. And now everyone sees what you like to do and how, like to, how you like to walk, how you like to talk, how, how you do this, how you do that. And they know that if you're doing it or if you have... You come with good value. You come with good intentions. You know, someone who I don't know steals from your house and then comes over for a cup of tea. You know, you're not gonna let them over for a cup of tea because they fucking you know they stole from your shit, so they probably got bad intentions. So steal my shit though. I don't care. Like it's good luck to you. Like yeah. you'll get yours back yeah, eventually. It's all G. Like everyone's in, like everyone. Everyone's in their their own timeline. You know, we don't all have the same timeline. Everyone, no. Yeah, everyone's on a different pace, different different speeds. But that's okay, because that's what makes an individual a superhero. That's it, man. Be a superhero, bro. Be yourself, bro. I think that's what I've like taken after reflecting on this decog. Like, bro, being yourself is being a superhero, in my opinion. Like, or to be a superhero is to be yourself. You know. And if you can feel good in your own skin then put that out there, man. Put that out there. Be, be Mr. Positive, you know, if you want to you be that. Lead by example, Lead bro. Lead by example, bro. Like, bro, just send it, man. Just send it. <laughs> just send it. Send it, bro. Lead by example. Be a superhero. Be yourself. Loyalty, diligence, and confidence. I've, if you, you can go through this decog and you could probably scroll through half an hour and I'll still be talking positivity. So, I hope for this, for the people out there, I hope that these are some tools, some values, some, you know, core focuses that you can take on, can put in your basket, you know, and you can figure out for yourself and see what works and what doesn't. If it doesn't help you, if it does help you, gangster, if it doesn't help you, get rid of it. It's only going to weigh you down. Just keep on... You know, keep on keeping on, man. Keep it positive. Keep on keeping <laughs> on. I fuck with that. Is there anything else you think the people need to hear? Um, Do you have any upcoming dates? 24th of November. The Streets Barbershop. Shout out to the Streets Barbershop. Shout out Naz. Shout out Naz. Um, shout out Boom. Shout out Boom. Shout out Sarah. Wait, Boom. Boom just... Wait, let me show you this. Show, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Show me 20 bucks anyway. <laughs> no free haircuts. Me 20 bucks. <laughs> you just put on my tab, eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Cleaned up from boom. Always my barber, Barbasteros, the man. Always, always. Mr. Leg Tats at the moment. Uh, Wait, I'm going to throw you on Ali. Is there another Flexibition date? Flexibition. Yes, there is. December 6th. So 24th of November. That's the Streets Barbershop, the block party. That is a no alcohol event. That is all vibes. No smoking, no drinking, all vibes. There'll be food there. I got you. Now, Flexibition. It's going to be a Bloom nightclub in the Noiser Room. Now, this is our second installment. The last one was crazy. Wait, how crazy was the last one? Lit 2100. Yeah. Bro, it was, it was crazy, bro. Like, it was a bit of fun. It was so raw, bro. Like, we didn't even have a stage, man. I didn't even care about no stage. Like, it's just straight vibes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I've been talking about this vibe the whole time. You want to see this vibe that's been bouncing around, been going on in Geelong? Flexibition on the 6th of December. 6th of December. Put in, put in your shit now. Put in your little calendars. 6th of December, man. Coming up to Christmas. It is also going to be my 
few of, few of the homies' birthdays. So like, it's gonna be a crazy night, man. Like, I'll, I'll I don't want to go into too much details because like, sixth of December. That's all I can say. I can hype it up. I I can tell you everything that's gonna happen, but I'd rather just leave it for a surprise, for a surprise. If you want to see people flex their shit, if you want to flex your shit, if you want to be a part of a flex exhibition, hit me up, bro. Hit me up. If you want to be a part of a vibe, if you want a platform for you to express, bro, hit me up. If you got the shit to get lit, then let's get it. If you got the <laughs> shit to get lit, then let's get yeah, it. Yeah, Couldn't good. have said it any better myself. <laughs> for Kip, fucking thank you, brother. Thank you, bro. I had fun, man. Finally, on the decog. Shout out to different kind of genius and all the boys making this happen. Shout out to Griffin Burger. Hopefully that gets me a free burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, look after the homie. Wait, Sammy, open up in Geelong. Oh, bro. No, nah, don't. I'll get fat. <laughs> <laughs> nah, bro. I need a Griffin Burger. But I do like heading out to Ballarat. I like coming out to see Sam, bro, bro. It's always a good trip. Oi, that's only one of us. Fuck it. We need you down here too. Come on, man. I need them burgers. All right. Bad. No, nah, but I think that's it for Different Kind of Genius this week. Thank you for Kip Con for showing down and showing us how to keep it positive. How to keep it positive, baby. Big ups to Griffin Burger once again. If you live in Ballarat and you're not eating their food, you fucking should be. And uh, shit, I think that's it. Stay safe, peace out, one love, and I'll see you all next week. Gangsta. LT2100, you know what to do. Mm-hmm.